Enzo Shock Show episode number 29, where I answer your questions on ultrasonic transducers, piezoelectric devices, what to do with them, how to analyze them, and uh, just a bunch of other things about them. So let's go ahead with this with today's question. Um, this this is. This is actually a pretty important topic, and it is why is what is special and why is special. I'll correct that. So, what is special about resonance and anti-resonance for a drive circuit? Why is resonance and anti-resonance so special? Um, today, I'm going to answer that question. Why is it so important? Uh, the misconception uh, that is out there is that the only that the, the main thing that's good about resonance is the amplification of from voltage to uh, displacement and that's the main thing you know we have more displacement resonance that's why we run at resonance um, but now the other question comes into mind so why do we ha why do we have some transducers a lot of welding devices actually why do they work at anti-resonance um, which will you'll take several times more voltage in order to drive so uh, let's continue here so what's so special about resonance for the drive circuit because we can produce voltage at any at any amplitude you, you're using a transformer, so why why bother going to the resonant frequency and doing some frequency tracking anyway? So let's start talking about the ideal transducer. So the this uh, plot here should be pretty obvious to you. Green is phase and blue is impedance. So at resonance we have minimum impedance approximately and also zero phase. And in between resonance and resonance, you get to a maximum phase for an ideal transducer that would be like, let's say 90 degrees positive. And you go back down uh, through the anti-resonance, you also hit another zero degrees phase point, And then you come back to your uh, inductive behavior. All right. Oh, sorry, your, 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 your capacitive behavior. And your ideal resin, your ideal transducer at resonance its equivalent circuit is a resistor. It has, you know, zero degrees phase. That's that's what a resistor is. And at anti-resonance, you also have a resistor, but it's much larger. And you may initially think that, wow, that makes it really unideal to drive. It's harder to put power through a larger resistor or a larger, uh, higher impedance device. That's not true. Uh, you can um, use a transformer and significantly increase the amount of voltage several times, transformer windings, it, you know, transform that power like a transmission um, in, in a mechanical system. And therefore, you would be able to drive that, um, you know, from a lower voltage power driving circuit, you'd be able to drive a higher impedance load at anti-resonance. So that doesn't really provide a technical problem. And maybe it's due to regulatory reasons. You may not want to have that voltage depending on your device, like if it's a consumer handheld device. Um, but um, so an at resonance, the, the impedance is lower. So you have a better voltage to um, displacement conversion however at anti-resonance you do have a little more stability under load for the oscillation level uh, that is once you have loading occurring your impedance is going to drop at anti-resonance and therefore it's going to kind of self-compensate if you have a voltage controlled power source like you're very strongly controlling voltage versus current which that's usually most uh, amplifiers and power you know drive circuits focus on the voltage first uh, in terms of how they deliver um how to deliver power. So that's what's good about it. Um, at off resonance, we don't have, we have either you have a capacitive circuit going on or you have a mixture of phase angles, like the phase is not zero. And that what that actually provides is you're putting voltage into the system and you're getting current, but not all that current is dissipating power. Uh, is dissipating power in your, and if it's not dissipating power in your transducer, it's not producing useful work. It's not doing useful work. It's not really adding a lot of energy into your uh, transducer per cycle. So you are actually having to drive your transducer at a higher voltage, at a higher current, uh, in order to sustain the same oscillation level. Um, now, all you know when if you look at your transducer in again ideal, uh, assuming an ideal case, assuming only mechanical oscillation is a thing which is causing damping, uh, and obviously interaction with the outside, which has which is proportional to mechanical oscillation, uh, then if you were to drive slightly off resonance, let's say a little bit less than resonance, you you start you start to get slightly capacitive. Let's say uh, you will have. Um, 
you have, you'll have, let's say, some capacitive behavior, let's say, at negative 80 degrees when you start getting off the resonance points, or negative 70 degrees. Uh, you, you're slightly capacitive. You're, you compensate by putting a larger voltage. You'll have to actually draw over the larger current because now you're driving the dielectric response as well of the, of the device. So you actually have to drive the larger voltage, larger current to achieve the same power input to your device. Now, you, you might say, oh, wait, that's, that's no problem. We're still dissipating the same power in the device. But the problem lies in the drive circuit. Now the drive circuit has to provide more voltage and also that current that you said, oh, it's not power dissipated. The drive circuit's not 100% efficient. The most efficient point, okay, this is actually the point of the video. We drive at resonance because that resistive behavior is the most efficient uh, type of load that we can drive and design for. Um, that's why we drive at resonance. Otherwise, you have to configure a way of capturing that energy that you charge up this, you know, the dielectric component and you have a little bit of a capacitive feel that you charge up your device and you charge it back down. That's not inherently um, an efficient process from a drive circuit perspective. There are certain circuits which are developed to capture that energy, but you, it is. It, it still uh, um, it creates much more complex circuit. In most applications, they won't even bother with it. Um, but especially for 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 uh, uh, a battery powered piezo applications, you really have to be um, cognizant of power of of achieving optimizing loads. That's why I guess uh, frequency tracking or what you choose for a battery operated system, or let's say if you have if you're significantly power limited or voltage or current limited, and what you can what you can uh, ask for, uh, then you definitely have to be concerned about well, am I, am I driving my transducer at the most efficient point for my drive circuit that's probably going to be at resonance or anti-resonance and the case i just described was for an ideal transducer it has that zero degrees phase um it has well it has good coupling it has a good q let's talk about something else the unideal transducer this guy this like it's not sharp the resonance and anti-resonance are close together. The phase, as you can see here, this is da dash line to zero degrees phase. It doesn't get to zero degrees. The phase, it just seems like it goes up and down. And it, it do, don't use a 3 dB impedance method for this, you, for anal analysis of the Q factor. When you want to find out the, re the actual resonance and anti-resonance frequency in this case, use real impedance for the anti-resonance maximum and real admittance to a maximum to figure out the resonance. So let's go keep going. So basically this is not ideal. There's no resistive behavior, complete resistive behavior ever. So what do you do in this case? How do you get this thing to efficiently be driven? Aha, I provided you a solution in one slide. You provide a parallel inductor. And at that specific resonant frequency, these two components will cancel. They'll form a re anti resonance circuit actually, where you don't have your um, where you don't have current going through this these two branches. Actually, they'll be exchanging current. There's current going, but you'll they'll be exchanging current, and such that um, this provides its own internal kind of a recycling of current and charge. So you don't have to keep providing a lot more current. So what will then be happened is these two will cancel. You'll just be left with this LCR circuit, and definitely there will be a R pure R at the resonance for an LCR circuit. There will be a pure R. The reason things get a little bit screwed up is because that parallel capacitance that exists in a real transducer from the intrinsic capacitance or the static capacitance of your uh, of your transducer, the, uh, you know, because it's piezoelectric. Sliding on to the next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay. Let's do this. All right, so this is what effectively can, can happen. Uh, now, I didn't run in the simulation for this, so um, take it with a grain of salt, uh, like usual. Uh, but basically what happens is you cancel these two components by adding a uh, inductor, a match inductor for that specific frequency. Then you, then this resistor here at resonance is, is, is gonna be highlighted. So effectively what's gonna happen is your coupling factor gets a lot larger because when you add this inductor, it cancels the capacitor, not completely, only at that one frequency. So as you get off resonance, so it'll almost appear like your a transducer is has a lot larger Q factor, uh, sorry, a lot larger coupling factor, and and then you'll get a uh, you'll get a resistive response at your resonant frequency, and you can 
the important part of this, you're not going to get a voltage amplification. The voltage, that same voltage source is not going to be able to provide more displacement for you. Unless it was current limited, then it might be. But let's say it's not current limited. Your voltage source from this, let's say it's 5 volts at 30 kilohertz or something, it's not going to provide more, more excitation, but it's going to provide a pure dissipation of energy, a better, a better use of the current to your device. Uh, from your from your drive circuit perspective, it's also going to be easier to lock on to a resonant frequency now that it has a more clear response versus something like this. You'll you, by adding that parallel resistor, sorry, parallel inductor, you're going to get something like that. All right. So that was all for today, episode number 29. Again, my name is Dr. Shikani. Every day I'm presenting on different questions on ultrasonic transducers. Uh, leave uh, comments, uh, please, and also questions. Uh, feel free to check out the links, which will have the presentation notes for today, a link to sign up for daily updates through your email, getting those presentation notes directly to your email. And also, you can take a look at my consulting offerings and services to see if uh, you'd like to work with me on your ultrasonic transducer commercial product. Thanks for watching. You, uh, This is your host, Dr. Shikani. I'll see you tomorrow on episode number 30.